Hello, my friends. Welcome back to BLAST, where we are building lives around solid truth. Today, we're going to be speaking of love, and this will complete our video series for um, the season of Advent. When we speak of the gift of love, the first thing that comes to mind is um, I once read about the shortest sermon ever given. Uh, supposedly, it was uh, given by an Episcopal priest, and he stood up and he looked out over his congregants and he said, love. And then he sat down and that was the end of the sermon. I'm not sure if he said it like that or not, but the point is that was the word that was said. That was the word that was given as a summarization of everything we need to know. Is it enough? Well, what is love? I mean, on one level, we could sort of define it as um, an intense feeling of deep affection. We tell people we love them. That can mean many things. We can love our spouse, our children, our friends. There are so many different ways to say I love you, so many different ways to express it. In the Bible, we come across two um, primary ways of theologically understanding love. One is by the term agape. This is a Greek word. And agape is that unconditional love properly rendered to God and neighbor. That unconditional love properly rendered to God and neighbor. So right away we can see that if it's a proper love for God, it must be unconditional. It must be. Because the God who is infinite and who gives us life demands no less a response. Of course it's unconditional. There are no conditions that keep us from God. No conditions that can properly justify us as subjects, holding ourselves away from God, the object of our affection, not only morality, not only of worship, but of love. All love comes from God, even if not immediately directed back to God. God is the God of all that is good. He gives us the freedom to ignore his goodness. He gives us the freedom to misuse our gifts. I hope that we will not ignore God, and I hope we will properly use our gifts. Our gifts are properly used when we acknowledge that they come from God. And any tendency or desire to live those gifts out in such a manner that they overflow into others must have as its basic understanding that we are ultimately, in doing so, giving our gifts back to God. We do this directly. We do this through other people. However it shakes out, agape is something that we are to receive from God because he loves us without constraint. We're made in the image and likeness of God. If our love for God is unconditional, no matter how imperfectly we express it as such. God's unconditional love for us is perfectly demonstrated to us by God, who lavishes us with love, who answers our prayers, who never fails to show up, who never fails to send help. If you call on God and you need his love, you can say to God, give me love. You can ask God for love. Be prepared to receive it if you ask. Be prepared to sit in prayer. Be prepared to sit quietly. Be prepared to receive. But if you ask God for love, he will give it to you. And it will stir up something in you. At first, a sense of peace, a sense of being in something, being acknowledged, being heard. And then, on the other side of pleasant feelings, it can also arouse in us a sense of dissatisfaction, a holy longing. This is part of the gift of men I talked about in last week's video, or mentioned at least in last week's video, that we have this restlessness. This restlessness in the human condition is our attempt to respond to the love of God by co-creating. Sometimes we get this better than others. Agape can be perfected or enhanced by another type of love, which is known as philia, 
philia. This is the friendship reserved for a chosen friend. When we meet a friend, we reach out to the other, an other, someone who is different than us. We will have things in common with friends that will attract us. And yet in order for things to be the same or for people to have similarities, there must be at least two different things or people involved. We reach out to the other in a spirit of chosen friendship. We do so because of the differences. We do so because we see that we have an opportunity to learn and to enhance our self-understanding by also knowing other people and learning to love people in different ways. When we incorporate the divine mandate of agape, the divine mandate, and I say that it is a divine mandate because God, Jesus himself, summarizes the entire law that we are to love God and our neighbor as ourselves, and self-love is a divine command. This agape love is something that we are expected to carry out. No matter how imperfectly, this is something to which we are to respond to the love of God. And if that is enhanced with choosing freely, seeing God as the friend, seeing the other not as a threat, but as an entity with whom friendship is possible, we can tie together agape, we can tie together philia, and we can enhance our experience of God by freely choosing the encounters within which we are placed throughout our daily lives. To see the other, to freely choose the other, and to freely choose the other animated by a spirit of agape. This can place us in a position where we can see the other and we can know that God as our friend ultimately has placed us in a companionship with the entire human family, many of whom we can befriend, all of whom we are to have the love that is reserved properly for God and neighbor in this case, if nothing else, acknowledging human dignity, acknowledging that we're all children of God, acknowledging that we're all loved and respected and worthy of love and respect that is part of the human condition. Even when we do things that are terrible, even if people are criminals, and I'm not suggesting that you know, bad behavior be justified or that we feel compassion for people that do bad things necessarily, all I'm suggesting is that we really are all called by God to live in a spirit of human dignity. We all have human dignity. We all have that worth. Existence itself is a good we can learn to see God in the other, even if we don't like the other. We don't have to. Philia is nice if you can have chosen friendship. If you don't have it, don't knock yourself out over it. You're under no obligation to try to forge Philia with people with whom it cannot be properly forged. But we are bound up in the love reserved for God and neighbor. Agape is the heuristic through which we ought to view the world, and whenever possible, to enhance the philia. When we do this, perhaps we can get to the point of high love, where we see the chosen friend in the people for whom we would also observe basic human dignity. In John chapter 15, verse 13, Jesus says this, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. For Jesus, he was willing to see the entirety of humanity as one vast corporate friend. Perhaps throughout the new year, agape in our own hearts could be expanded and animated in a similar manner. Love is a lot more than just saying to somebody, I love you. Love is multifaceted because we ourselves are multifaceted, because we ourselves are unified totalities that have so many different facets to our being. And yet when we get beyond those facets and we get into our depths, our innermost depths, out of which we respond to God the most and where God is most present in our lives and in our innermost cores, 
in our hearts. We see that the gift of love is the gift of all. The gift of love is the great gift. The gift of love is the heuristic through which we are to view the universe because we know that the universe itself is animated by the love of God. And we live in that love and we move and we freely exist in that love and we give it to others. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. So as God has laid down his life for us so that we might have it all the more, let us acknowledge this God in love. Let us not count the cost. Let us not be afraid to respond to this God who loves us and who visits us in so many different ways, including as a baby on Christmas morning. Let us go in love, my friends. Merry Christmas and a happy new year to you all. Amen.